All right, with me I have Green Pickles from Team Snorlax. And so first off, congratulations on your victory against Irrelevant, taking the 2-0. Thank you. And uh, I'm joined here by Potato Ninja and uh, Noob Slayer 67. So first off, um, how did you guys feel that, ser that series went overall? From my perspective, it looked uh, almost like you guys were just kind of on the rails, able to just play it and, you know, relaxed and everything was pretty easy for you actually i think from the beginning um uh we kind of messed up in the uh, laning phase like I, I definitely lose i'm playing dahaka and i definitely lose against the URL up yep. top lane so we had to do a rotation there we have yeah we were struggling there at first yeah i noticed that rotation. Up in the first dk as well um some miscommunication there um but we were able to you know stay calm and just kind of play our game and kind of take the rest of the game from there yeah, I, I'd say, like, aside from the, I guess, like, first several minutes of the game, where after after they got the DK, it looked like a completely different game you guys played. And it was more so the accumulation of the two series, where when you look at the total stats and how much of a lead you guys had achieved, it just seemed overall that your game plan just allowed you to, to ride the game on rails almost. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, mid game, especially, we found some pickoffs that allowed us to kind of just snowball from there. Mm -hmm. um, we were just kind of playing a macro style strategy of just keeping our level advantage, uh, making sure we had talent tier uh, advantages for fights, and then um, kind of just winning those team fights from there. Now, the first game, I saw you guys pick up the Meltdown. I've, I've been seeing people talk about Urel losing to Meltdown nowadays. Mm -hmm. And is that a strategy you were hoping to use as well in the second match until they banned the Meltdown, or were you still going to play it differently? Yeah, Kyle, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, it's, to be honest, I uh, wasn't going to pick him. Uh, I was going to pick Thrall, and uh, I just, I, I don't know. Every time I see two tanks, I just can't pass up the opportunity to play such a damage over time uh, <laughs> hero, so... Sexy. Just, uh, Sexy. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I've been hearing people say like uh, post Marad's uh, nerf that Ural basically can't 1v1 a mouth L anymore, which was kind of showing in the first game where you look like you were winning slash holding the lane better than um, the reverse situation of Ural versus Dahaka. Yeah, and I also think um, like we didn't even go into it thinking that I'd be the sole winner against Urel. So uh, it was just interesting how like um, when we did team fight and when we came together on objectives, it made it really like uh, it pressured their tanks a lot more than they anticipated, especially when they dove. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a nice counter pick. Were you guys worried at all when you saw the Tyrael pick up in the first game since Tyrael is kind of like the, a wild card in both how a team executes with him and how he himself executes? I mean, I think he's really, really good if you play in a coordinated setting, a coordinated team, um, and everyone's on point with communications. Um, so there was a little worry there. Um, but, you know, thankfully, I think we were able to kind of bait out some of those sanctifications early on in those fights, um, and that kind of just led us to, to win those. Yeah, it was kind of... Uh, you use sanctification too early. There's purification salvo. There's last rites, and if you use it or if you hold it, waiting for those things, well, those heroics may never come anyways, and you might still lose the team fight. Uh, yeah. Definitely. In one of the in one of the team fights, um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but I used last rites on him uh, just to bait out that, and he did. He used it, uh, mm -hmm. saved himself, but didn't get any value from it. <laughs> Yeah. That was down in the corner by the tribute. Yep. Yep. Now, uh, are these comps you guys have been playing before? Because I noticed like Johanna Dahaka picked up pretty quickly in those comps as well. Are you, are you guys fans of those two tanks in general? So I think they're just pretty strong in uh, today's meta. Um, so I think you only have a few tank options to go from. So. Uh, you know, <laughs> you might as well grab them early. Yeah, right. I actually feel like uh, Dahaka is a pretty good pick. 
in most of these uh, matches as uh, most teams don't know how to counter the mm -hmm. global uh, uh, burrow. Right. Yeah, they don't deal with global bur or burrows. Either yeah. they don't draft their own global or they they don't know how to communicate in such a way of like, or decide on what sort of rotations to do while there's a global present. Right, to be honest with you, they didn't have a global presence. We were able to kind of mop them up and down the map because of it. Yeah. So we were able to hold off on people coming to tributes. Both of those maps were, were uh, I guess, objective-oriented, where you have to kind of meet at the same spot. And without having the global, we wouldn't be able to lane at the same time, so we were able to pick up some extra XP and really get the, the lead. Yeah. I mean, you basically play ring around the roses with them, and you're always winning the race because you have the Dahaka who can make anything a 2v1 or a man right. advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, um, aside from the DK uh, situation in the first game, or sorry, second game, did you guys feel you played the first game pretty optimally, or were there things you do even differently in that one? To be honest with you, I felt like the first game was a lot better than the second game. The second game was a little wonky at first until we kind of caught our legs. <laughs> that, that's definitely Agreed. fair. Yeah. There was a little miscommunication, and then we weren't really oriented to the objective in the middle. And so that's how they picked up that Dragon Knight. It was a little worse I think the thing first. we took away from it was just we were able to make the best of the situation, even right. though we didn't really think about the implications of double-picking tanks in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to do it ever again, I think we would have picked like a Rainer beforehand and then think about who we're gonna solo against uh Urel. So Yep. But we sense. came away we came away pretty well with it. I mean we, we handled it fine and we were able to like rally around um good rotations and uh camp timing. Yeah. Now who does your shot calling and drafting for you guys? Uh I obviously it sounds like it's a little bit of a team thing of for drafting at least, where someone's like, I think this would be a great pick, uh, like Meep Slayer was saying, picking up the mouth L when there's the double warriors, always wanting to get that value. Yeah, right now it's kind of just all over the place. We all kind of contribute. Um, I think maybe uh, in the future we'd like to settle on just having one shot colored. Um, but right now, you know, we're still trying to figure out each other's styles. Uh, we're a new team, just formed a few weeks ago. So uh, definitely a lot of progress we made there. Yeah, yeah sure. if if you guys are new, it's obviously you know kind of get your feet wet, feeling out like who would make the best shot caller, who would make you know potentially like the best um, final seon drafting and that kind of stuff. Right. No, I agree. I think that for the most part, there's some discussion throughout the game, but uh, somebody who ended up being assertive and then kind of everybody followed. And if there's a call that nobody really kind of agreed with, or somebody didn't agree with, they voiced it and we kind of. Sat there for as quick as possible and answered and kind of moved the way we did. So, yeah, that, and that makes sense. So, before we get going, um, I want to give the floor to you guys. Yeah, I guess each of you can give a shout out if you like. Shout out to my mama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, shout out to Pickles for finding us on Discord. Yeah, there like, you go. The team, uh, yeah, you know, it just it really worked out. Um, yeah. Definitely yeah. lucked out. Uh, we, we basically <laughs> just chose like the first guys who wanted to try out with us, and uh, yeah, here we are. Well, oh, um, one final question. I, are are the Noob Slayers friends or family in real life, or just like randoms who have the same names? Brothers from another mother, my man. <laughs> Brothers from uh, another mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Always I'll wondering. change our names to uh, new yep, players. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Yep. Well, thank you so much for the interview, and best of luck in the rest of the series that you have in future NGS games. And uh, yeah, it, it guys were looking pretty good tonight, so I'm sure you'll keep getting better. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, thanks absolutely. Thanks for thank you. Yeah. No thank problem. you for casting us. Have a good night, guys. You too. Yeah, you too, man. Too. See ya. All right, guys, that was Team Snorlax with the Double Noob Slayers 76 and 67 to keep things a little bit confusing and on your toes there, along with the rest of the crew, including uh, Green Pickles and Pitto Ninja. So 
that's not it for me but the next series we have is at 11 p.m eastern so we're gonna go and take a break i'll be right back i'm gonna put up the clips and i'm gonna go and uh play one game of unranked in the meantime just to keep the stream on and keep it keep it going all right so i'll be right back and uh hopefully you can get yourselves a drink keep yourselves entertained for a short while and enjoy the the clips all right with their man advantage or two man advantage to be fair since there was no one in mid top of that so they've got in mid urel is uh down here going to be able to help 